Knight Rider, Magnum P.I., Top Gun, and Andrew Clyde, all on this week's episode of Fresh Freedom. Welcome back to the Fresh Freedom Podcast. As you know, this is the podcast with the freedom-loving freshman members of the House of Representatives, where we provide you a behind-the-scenes look at what's happening in Congress. I'm joined today by my fellow friend and conservative freshman member of Congress, Josh Burkeen from Oklahoma, and our special guest today is Andrew Clyde from Georgia. Andrew is a combat veteran and a small business owner he was first elected to serve in the House of Representatives in November of 2020, and we are very happy to have him on the show today. Great to be with you. Um, so, Andrew, first question, are you a dog guy or are you a cat guy? No, I'm definitely a dog guy, and the dog is a Doberman. It has to be a Doberman pincer. A do- so how many Dobermans? Uh, we are on now our third Doberman pincer. Um, her name is Georgia. She's now... So it's not Zeus and Apollo? No, no, no. I wish. For I anybody wish. that gets that reference. <laughs> That's that, a like, Magnum Josh, do, you, do you get that? No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> no idea? No. <laughs> it's a 1980s reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What Mag- is it? Magnum, Magnum P- P.I. Magnum P.I. Oh, that's right. the two dogs. All- I mean, I, I yeah. watched that when I was yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have the Ferrari, though. Okay. Oh, you do? I do. <laughs> <laughs> you, so you have the Dobermans and, and the, Ferrari. the Ferrari. Have wow. you taken a photo of this? <laughs> Except mine is black and his was red. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you got to you got to remedy man. that. You got to <laughs> you got to get that thing painted red. We're, we're the same age. Awesome. I mean, both of us had to be like five, six years of age. You know, watching that show. Um, so the it's the the dog's name is Georgia. Georgia, because right. you're from Georgia. Right. That's, that's so exactly cute. right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now, but that's my current Doberman. My first Doberman, her name was Kit. Kit. Kit, and it stands for Knights Industries 2000. Or, oh, that's I, I, another, another 80s, 80s reference. <laughs> Josh, what was that from? Uh, I've learned this previously, so <laughs> give, them, give, them, give them what that's for. Knight Rider. Yeah. Knight Rider, because that's exactly the way my Doberman acts. She is. A night rider. David I mean, Hasselhoff. Yeah, yeah. She disappears <laughs> into the night and goes into attack mode when necessary. Now, <laughs> Dobermans, what, what characteristics do you like about them? They're fast. They're incredibly fast. Um, they're very fearsome, or fearless, I should say. They'll, well, both fearsome and fearless. Okay. Um, they attach to a person and they bond tremendously well. And once they've bonded to their person, um, they are now completely yours and they will sacrifice themselves in any way to protect their person and that's it's it's incredible trait of a doberman Uh, they are for their person they're the most loving dog um really oh absolutely they're stealthy too oh incredibly stealthy yep stealthy fast i mean there's not a trait of a doberman um, that I, that I don't think is a good trait. So they won't they won't turn on their owner. Like the other dog breeds that you have to worry about. Are they the dog that? Aren't they the dog that like their brain continues to grow and then like they're smart as can be. I mean okay. they are incredibly intelligent mm. dogs. Right. Oh, I'm, I mean my dog knows what her ball is at one year old or frisbee is. I mean she knows all, you know all sorts of things. Do they shed? Um, oh, they're short hair dogs. They're shorter, yeah, yeah, they're short hair. What so, kind of dog guy yeah. are you? Dog guy or cat guy? I'm a dog guy. And what kind I, of dog? I hate cats. <laughs> um, we have a one of those, like, it's a mutt. It's basically, mm. it's a designer mutt is what we would call oh. it. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's, you know, cross between uh, King Charles Cavalier and a Bashan. We call those pot lickers in Oklahoma. <laughs> 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 the dog that shows up on your back porch and starts licking pots. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Andrew, you served in the military for how long? 28 years, 11 years active, 17 reserve. Thank you for your service, and and, an honor. and how did you serve? Well, my first 11 years uh, was uh, in the Navy, in Naval Aviation, and I did, um, uh, I was a Naval Aviation Logistics Officer, served in a fighter squadron, an aircraft carrier overseas, and then air station, another aircraft carrier, 
Finally, I taught aviation logistics was my final tour and went into the reserves and um, spent uh, three combat tours uh, with the Navy Seabees, Navy Construction Battalion, mm -hmm. attached to Marine Expeditionary Force in Iraq. Wow. Now, now you're in the Freedom Caucus. You've been in Congress three terms? No, nope, three years. Three years. Okay. Halfway through my second term. Okay. But before that, you had, you had a small business, or still have a small business. Still have a small business, that's right. And it's a gun shop. It's an armory. It's, it's not just a gun shop. Yeah, right? all right. You're right. It's an armory. It's Describe an armory. what that means, like a gun shop in, a, in an armory. How'd you get an armory for a gun shop? I built it. I you built, built an armory. I built an armory from the ground up. and Based upon what? No, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you talking about? So you're saying... Well, it looks like a castle or something, doesn't it? It does. It, it's a recreation of the original... You didn't know this? Cook and Brother Armory. No, I didn't. Looks I, like a I castle. just thought he had a gun store. No, no. It's a, it's a recreation of the original Cook and Brother Armory built in Athens, Georgia in 1862. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So it has turrets, it has battlements, it has parapet walls. I mean, it's a, it's a true armory. So it's, How many square so foot is can, in this thing? <laughs> it, it, it's only 12,000. Only 12,000 square, yeah. square feet. How many guns are in this armory? Firearms, Josh. Um, Firearms. <laughs> Four to 5,000. Right now. How many employees working, serving? 25. 25. 25 employees. Wow. Yeah. You, you mean business about the Second Amendment, don't you? Oh, I certainly do. And, yeah. and every kind of firearm you can possibly imagine. Everything from pistols and rifles and shotguns. So how did you start? So you had to start small, right? You, mm -hmm. you served in the I military. Did. And then yeah. at one point, did you say, I'm done with this. I want to start a firearm store. Or did you... Was there something in between? No, it was um, when I left active duty, um, I kind of already had my federal farms license. I was just kind of doing it as a hobby, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so once I left active duty, I went to the University of Georgia there in Athens, and I got um, my master's in business. And during that time, I created the business plan for what became Clyde Armory. So I did this as a project. And then once I graduated, then I went out and decided well, I'm going to do this for real to put food on the table. And, and um, so started my business then in, in, um, uh, for real and gradually grew it over the last, well, 25 years. And um, while I was in the reserves, stayed in the reserves for the 17 years. And what was the incident where the federal government brought you in on, on, <laughs> on something that kind of made national news? <laughs> that was in 2013. Okay. After the Sandy Hook incident of 2012, um, where that, uh, the terrible, terrible incident with the school shooting. And uh, President Obama had just been reelected, and he threatened to um, uh, basically end all sales of black rifles. He was going to do that with his phone and his pen. And um, that didn't happen, but it sure sent the industry into an uproar. Mm -hmm. And so we sold every gun that we had, literally, in... Um, your whole inventory. You just, a, a you get, whole, whole inventory of black rifles. Because you were convinced the President of the United States was going to illegally change the people whole... People were convinced, yeah. P people were convinced of that, and they were afraid of that. Um, I mean, it was his last term. He didn't have to, you know, get four more mm -hmm. years done to worry about re-election. So he's going to do everything in his power. Fortunately, um, he wasn't able to do a lot. He wasn't able to do much. But... Um, now, you, not, by not restocking, I mean, there's some element where you're thinking, okay, this could turn that way for my business model also. If you're selling out your inventory, there's also a role where you're thinking what's going to happen on the regulatory side. Absolutely. But, you know, we had good business relationships with the manufacturers. So we'd sell out, we'd bring it in as fast as we possibly could. And so we, we did really well during that time frame. And the Internal Revenue Service, uh, because a lot of what people uh, bought guns with was cash. So we deposited a fair bit of cash. And... Um, the Internal Revenue Service got wind of the amount of cash we were depositing and um, came in and it was April the 12th, 2013, a day that for me will live in infamy. All right? They came in and confiscated $940,313 from my business and accused me of improperly depositing my cash in the bank. I have no idea how you can improperly deposit cash, but they accused me of structuring. And uh, I didn't even know what structuring was. Um, I thought structuring a business was a good thing, um, but they obviously uh, thought that I was violating the law. So they confiscated the money. I met with them with my attorney. Almost a million dollars. I've almost a million dollars, and that was almost everything we had in the bank at the time after we paid our 
our taxes on April the 15th, three days later, I was now in the hole and had to borrow almost $100,000 just to do payroll for my business. Hmm. So, it, it and the was, government here to help you. Yeah, yeah. But it, eventually, um, I ended up uh, taking them to court, uh, getting my money back in court. All right. And then I determined that this wasn't going to happen to anybody else because what they did was wrong. They violated the Constitution. This is the IRS. Okay? Yeah. And, um, and then I was able to testify against them in Congress uh, in 2015. And um, eventually through that testimony and the testimony of a few others, uh, two others, um, they created a bill called the uh, RESPECT Act. It stands for Restraining Excessive Seizure of Property Through the Exploitation of Civil Asset Forfeiture Tools Act. Because that's what they did. They used um, uh, civil, civil asset, asset for forfeiture to mm. take my money and to take my prop, you know, what I owned. And um, that, that bill was then signed into law by President Trump on uh, July 1st of 2019. And they named it after the three of us that testified against the IRS. Now, do you have a, a picture with Trump over that? Uh, um, the bill signing? No, yeah. I don't. But I do have the bill. Yeah. And I have the pen. Wow, that's okay. great. And then a few years later, you run for Congress. And a few, yeah, a few years later, I so ran for So from Congress. that, was it kind of a natural progression, your notoriety from that, that legal battle? Um, once the story was told, all right, mm -hmm. then people were like, wow, this is a guy that stood up to the IRS, and not only beat the IRS, but took away their authority. Yeah. Right, to do this to anybody else, because that's what the legislation did. And he supports the Second Amendment. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yep. Second Amendment. We enable individual participation in the preservation of liberty. That's what the Second Amendment is all about right there. Yeah, you also stood up to, you stood up to the government a few times. You stood up during COVID, um, right? Yeah, I got fined, uh, I think, $118,000 total. And that was for not wearing a mask on the House floor. I got fined, I think, five hundred dollars the first time, and twenty five hundred dollars every time after that. So explain that to people. So you, why would so this was the Pelosi? This was the Pelosi, right? Era. Right. It was when Pelosi was the speaker. She implemented some new rules, right? She, as the speaker. That's right. She implemented rules that said number one, they put magnetometers around the House floor because she declared Republicans to be the enemy inside the House. And so therefore, she put magnetometers around there so no Republicans could bring in weapons to damage, you know, to hurt the Democrats. And I'm like, that's the stupidest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so uh, I bypassed the metal detectors because... So was your fines, <laughs> so was your fines over bypassing the, the metal detectors because of your, you know, just uh, aversion to, to wanting to be screened for Second Amendment? Or was the fines over wearing a mask? Both. Both. Both, okay. right. Uh, so wait. how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it was because of this. The fines were mandatory, and they were going to take them out of your pay, okay, which violated the 27th Amendment of the Constitution, yeah. which says that you may not vary a member's pay, all right, without, without an intervening an election. election. Yeah. That's correct. So she did that, and so it violated the, the um, 27th Amendment. And we still have a lawsuit going on right now. It, currently, it's on its way to the Supreme Court. All right, about that very thing. You, you sued. I sued. I sued in June of 2021. And, and she fined you how much? 118000 total. 118000 right. How many violations? Oh, I, it was a lot. It was a bunch. <laughs> Two violations for walking around the metal detectors, and all the rest of them were for not wearing a mask on the House floor because I figured, you know, well, after the two violations. Your, the, freshman, your freshman year you did Freshman year. Yeah, freshman wow. year. Um, after the two violations of the, of the metal detector, you know, then if you don't pay the fine man, um, voluntarily, then they, they simply seize it from your congressional pay, right? which is the violation of the 27th Amendment right there. And so um, according to the rules of the seizure, it comes from um, uh, net pay, all right, which is pay after taxes. Right. And being a businessman, I understand that um, you can do federal tax withholding and you can you can, yeah, you can increase your withholding. You can increase your withholding. So I just increased my federal tax withholding until my net pay was zero. Was, was it? Well, it was a dollar and four cents. My attorney said I had to have some sort of, a, you know, damage. So I, I agreed on a dollar and four cents. So what that means is that then when you filed your tax return at the end of the year, you didn't got get it all a back. refund. That's correct. Okay. You just had to be in a financial position to float until the end of the year. That's correct. And I was. Okay. I was. I could do that. So I, that is. So you stuck it to. to I stuck Nancy, it to Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi. Yes. <laughs> she did wow. not expect that. And actually, there were a number of members 
on the house floor that did exactly the same thing that followed my lead. Mm. So, it's pretty cool. Mm. So you're on the appropriations committee. Uh, describe how rare that is. Um, you're also uh, on the Freedom Caucus, uh, within the Freedom Caucus. And so to be on the appropriations committee and in the Freedom Caucus is really rare. Um, can you describe how that all went down this last January and kind of what set that up? And Sure. Um, well, I was part of the 20 um, who um, stood up against uh, uh, the speaker in the speaker's battle um, so that we would have regular order in the house, you know, and, 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 and you all know all about that. And too, we have because, that, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't, unfortunately. <laughs> we, did for, we did for seven no, out of the 12 we, appropriation we, bills. We did. We did for a while. And um, it was a fact that, that when you have conservatives in a committee that actually get to work on the base text of the bill, then you end up with a bill that, that conservatives can help, can vote for. Yeah. And that was the whole point. You know, um, start at the origin of the process, kind of like a snowball when it starts at the top of a hill, as it goes down the hill and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, if you don't have people at the top of the hill that can make it go down the right side of the hill instead of the left side of the hill, you know, then you get yeah. left-leaning legislation where at the bottom, when it comes to everybody voting on it, then you just have to vote no. But if you can help craft it at the beginning of its stages and have conservatives on those important committees that can help do that, then you can have better legislation and you can move the entire conference to the right. And that was the whole point of of having the speaker battle to get some of us on, whether it's the rules committee or an appropriations committee or some of the, uh, the um, more influential committees uh, that would then allow us to craft legislation that would move the whole conference more cons to more conservative legislation. Describe on the appropriation committee during the CJS, describe what CJS is and describe your role in making sure when we were on pathway to do what had only been done four times in 50 years, which is actually finish the appropriation bills as the 1974 Budget Control Act dictates. Right, right. We were moving through that process mm -hmm. until this last fall when we you know, had the speaker situation, but we were on pathway to, to you know, for, for McCarthy to step by step start laying out, here's what I agreed to. Mm -hmm. Describe the, the, the appropriation bill that you focused on, the cuts that you were trying to accomplish, mm -hmm. and why the American people should applaud uh, reductions in, the, in those areas of spending. Well, CJS stands for Commerce, Justice, Science, and the most important aspect of that appropriation bill is the justice part, or the Department of Justice, which has the FBI and the ATF. And being a gun dealer, right, I'm very familiar with the ATF. Right? I'm very familiar with the FBI and all that they do. And I know of the abuses that have happened, the tremendous abuses in the, F, in, the, in the ATF and the FBI. I mean, all of the rules that they have put forward, like the yes. pistol brace rule, yeah. probably the most popular one that mm -hmm. people know of. All right, um, redefining a pistol with a brace that is literally there for service disabled veterans or mm -hmm. just you know any American with disabilities, mm -hmm. right? So they can you know more easily use a pistol because it's an arm brace that goes around yeah. your arm. It makes and you more accurate. It makes you more accurate and, and it allows Americans with disabilities you know to enjoy their time at the range more. Yeah. And they wanted to convert that, change the the um, classification of that pistol into a. National Firearms Act restricted short barreled rifle, which requires, which requires a, you know, a tax a, a, stamp. A tax stamp and you know all sorts of restrictions on it. And so I um, I led the Congressional Review Act to take down that particular um, rule set by ATF, but also within the Appropriations Bill within CJS, um, I put in what's called a limitation amendment. And I think honestly, on appropriations, they call me the king of of limitation amendments, I got 54 of them in, I think. Wow. Um, but literally what it did is say, no money can be spent on implementing in any way this particular rule. So it basically kills the rule. Mm -hmm. Nothing can be spent on it. That means you can't even talk about it if you're a federal employee. Yeah, you can't spend any time. Can't spend any time on it, can't spend any money on it, nothing like that. So the frame and receiver rule, the pistol brace rule, I mean, you know, all sorts of, um, uh, rules that, that this administration had put in place, we obliterated all of them, yeah. all right? Had we been able to complete the year long, had we Absolutely. gotten seven out of 12 done, the, right. the 12 out of 12. If our House appropriation had been passed, all right, in the Senate, like we passed right. it in the House, and the President forced to sign it, then we would have had some tremendous wins.
Mm. That's why appropriations is so important. It is. I'm glad you're on there. I am too. Do you, do you, have you had, like, I, I view the appropriations process and have lost nearly all hope. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you, do you see that there's an opportunity? Do you think that, that we could finally get to a place where, where we have a healthy appropriations process where we are, are getting towards a balanced budget? Or do you think that, uh, it's not possible under this makeup. No, I'm the eternal optimist. I, I believe that, um, that that we can get there, but you've got to have a backbone and you've got to be willing to fight for it and take the slings and arrows of the national news media and the left, claiming you know that you're going to throw grandma off the cliff or something like that, mm-hmm. um, and and actually you know vote the right way. If we're willing to do that. We can fix this process. Oh, hope is not lost. That's that's great to hear. Um, you've got the pin on for that's for, <laughs> for, yeah. for, so I support your rights. No have, spying. <laughs> both of you have it, and I think it's on my jacket too. So this week is FISA yes. week, supposedly. This is the Second or third time we were supposed to bring up FISA? Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, what right. FISA stands for. Mm-hmm. So, Andrew, talk us through what, what is FISA about and why? Well, Go ahead. Well, when FISA was passed, um, it was after the um, uh, 9 11, and they wanted to be able to spy on foreigners um, so that we could prevent terrorist attacks in the United States. And it has morphed, unfortunately, like. Unfortunately, like many programs like the Patriot Act, uh, they have morphed into being used by the three-letter agencies, you name it, the NSA, the CIA, the the FBI, um, you know, to spy on Americans. And we have found out through our congressional hearings, the judiciary hearing and oversight uh, primarily, that um, the FBI had been using the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act to spy on Americans over 278,000 times in just a year, a year Inappropriate. Ago. Yeah, they violated the rules. Right. What, what year was that? One year, 278,000 times they had done year. a search on right. U.S. citizens. That's correct. 278,000 United States citizens. In yeah. violation of the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, yeah. which says you have to get a warrant yep. in order to search someone. In order to be secure in your person, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and, and seizures. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. And so it needs to be reformed. It has to be reformed. That amendment, you know, that provision requiring a search has to be in that. And, and we're yet, talking about for United States it's, citizens. It's, we're citizens, for United, for United citizens, States citizens, right? U.S. citizens only. So we all agree that it needs to be reformed because I think our perspective, our philosophy, is that we're here to fight for the rights of the American people. Not we're not here for the rights of the deep state. That's correct. And for the federal government. That's right. And that and we, I think we all have the shared belief or, uh, that the Constitution is not designed to give the federal government the power. It's designed to say this is that you cannot have these powers. Yep. And, it, and so because of that, um, you know, we, we, need, we support this, but yet we, we've got so much pushback from the intel community. Mm-hmm. The intel community has, you know, they, they say you drain the swamp, but suddenly when you drain the swamp, you see the creatures come out. The monsters. And they've got fangs. Mm-hmm. And they're they're trying to kill any kind of reforms. This goes down to the basics, though, of what is written in our Declaration of Independence. What's the role of government? Yeah, defense is a part of those right. things that in the Constitution is enumerated, but our birth certificate says plainly the role of government is to secure our rights. That's correct. To life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's right. So it has to start from that genesis. Mm-hmm. The role of government is to secure your rights. In the Fourth Amendment, uh, it matters mm-hmm. that you would be protected against uh, unreasonable searches and seizures if you're not United States citizen. And just because somebody from a, if they're looking into a foreign actor, somebody not a United States citizen, and somehow your name is mentioned, or somehow you're on a group chat, mm-hmm. and you happen to just randomly be on a group chat talking about uh, um, four wheelers or whatever the subject matter is, mm-hmm. and you they can then make the link because he was on that group chat. He's got some inter- interface with this guy from another foreign country. That's how they were doing these, quote, queries, which is just a data search on you or just information right. gathering on you. It, right. This kind of reminds me of something from 10, 15 years ago when you and I, about the time you and I were in the state legislature. I don't know if you all remember that there was a big 
um, Supreme Court battle over DNA and about someone that had not been, um, a warrant had not been uh, served, right. where they were trying to collect DNA off someone. Because they said, well, we've got all these rape kits out there, all of these murders. Oh. And so if somebody just happens to be picked up, there's, then we ought to be able to get a DNA swab off of them. Well, a lot of people said, that's not right. You, that, that is, they, you're taking something from that person more mm -hmm. than just, um, and there ought to be a warrant before you can obtain that type of DNA evidence off somebody and throw it just in a database. And there was a Supreme Court uh, justice who was talking about this. I believe it was Scalia. He said, I don't care how great the motive is, that the, the, the fundamental rights, the Bill of Rights, it matters. I don't remember mm -hmm. the exact quote, but he's saying, I don't care. You can, you can wordsmith it and make something mm -hmm. seem so right with so well intentioned, but at the end of the yeah. day, the, Josh, the, the Bill of Rights matters. I'm disappointed in you. Why? You, there's, it's a quote that you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the king of quotes. <laughs> He's got, I mean, he, it, <clears throat> he has got so much memorized as far as quotes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know where you, how you, how you accomplish it, but okay. Well, well, so you so have to be able to defend the Fourth Amendment. Yeah. You know, to be, to be secure in your property, in your liberty, in your rights, in your person, all of that. Um, that's why we have it, and we have to defend it. We, every one of us has raised our hand. You know, whether in prior military or currently serving, you've raised your hand and you've sworn an oath to defend the Constitution yep. against all enemies, foreign and domestic. This is a domestic one. So you're from Athens, Georgia. You know, which is not, which is the same community that uh, Lake and Riley um, was a, was attacked and, and murdered. Mm -hmm. That's right. Suspect uh, being an illegal alien during the right. State of the Union. This made a lot uh, more mm -hmm. a second round of, of media coverage. The mm -hmm. incident with the young lady mm -hmm. was was the week or two prior during the State of the Union. This was you know mm -hmm. something that was talked about. Right. Um, Biden, and her name is Lincoln, not Lincoln. Which Biden correct. mispronounced. Yep. Right, right. Uh, Biden you. couldn't even get her name so right. What, how is your community, what's happened in the community? How are they responding to this? Well, uh, our community was stunned and actually um, very much on edge over this. Uh, because Athens, unlike, uh, well, unknown to a lot of people, is actually a sanctuary city. Right. It's one of the very blue cities in a very red state Andrew, of Georgia. Andrew, may I ask you really quickly before you go on? So there's an attractive element for them to want to go to these sanctuary cities. If I'm an illegal That's alien, That's right. and I know that it's a certain area of the United States is a, quote, sanctuary city, That's right. then I know that there's benefits by, by moving there. Mm -hmm. That's right. Keep going, please. Right. Free legal advice is one of those benefits. Um, the refusal of the local sheriff to honor ICE detainers you know, by Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. They're not going to turn over an illegal alien if they've got a, a, a conviction or if they've got, you know, they're charged with a crime or something like that. They're not going to do it. And so they feel safer. The illegal aliens feel safer in these sanctuary cities, but yet they perpetrate crime on American citizens. And the crime rate, you know, there is, uh, is, is greater. And as a result, we have um, this young lady, this beautiful young nursing student, um, who was there on the campus of the University of Georgia, was brutally murdered uh, by an illegal alien who came in about a year earlier through President Biden's parole program, yep. and which should never have been allowed to happen. Because case by case basis, whereas that's he's right. turned it into 30000 a month from right. Nicaragua, that's Haiti, right. Venezuela, yep. Cuba. Yep. And he, this young man came from Venezuela. Venezuela, right. So he he came in this parole. So mm -hmm. there's a direct fingerprint to Mayorkas's and Biden's decisions yeah. to abuse what that's Congress right. says I, that, that parole is supposed to be I've got to think for. that your community is just furious because Ooh, you, this they event happened and then the president can't pronounce her name right, does, and then um, apologizes to the perpetrator. Right, for calling him illegal. Migrant. Right, you know, to the, uh, to the uh, illegal immigrant. He is yeah, illegal. He, he wants to make sure they're, that they're calling these, these individuals migrants, trying to wordsmith uh -huh. this whole, hey, I, I, I mean, look, surely you saw what 45 said. He came out and said, I don't care what you call him, illegal immigrant. Did y'all see that? He's a murderer. I mean, yeah, it, a murderer. It, it, it doesn't matter what you call him. Yeah, this, whole, right. this PC over calling the illegal aliens uh, the, the correct terminology is mm -hmm. insanity. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's illegal alien and it, you know, this particular person needs to experience capital punishment. Um, and we're, you know, and when we're done with that, we're happy to, to you know, send the rest of them home. Send, send them all back, you know, deport them all. Absolutely. They came to this country illegally. The first thing they did was break the law. Yeah. And the reason they come to this country is because this, this country offers people opportunity and liberty and, and freedom and, and it's prosperous. And why are we that way? Because those four words above the Supreme Court, equal justice under law. Yeah. We are a law-abiding country and they are lawbreakers. And as a result, they want what we've got, but they don't want to abide by our law. Yeah. Well, you know, Andrew, it's it's evident from your heart. You know, you're a, a man who served your country. You fought. There's for even your pictures country, of him looking like Tom rights. Cruise and Top Gun, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure your editors can add those pictures uh, of, to uh, to this video of Andrew looking like Goose. Uh, yeah. Well, there's a Maverick. One where he's got a mustache, a face on, looks like Maverick sitting in the cockpit, and there's one from the side profile that you and I saw earlier. That actually, he looks a, a little bit. And this is 20 years ago, like I Tom do. Cruise, like a little like more he's than 20. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, uh, How many we, times do you have to take that picture post to get it just right? No. <laughs> Is this, do you have the beach photo too? The, the volleyball? The volleyball, the volleyball. <laughs> Another 80s reference. I know. Were you, were you, you were 20 in your 80s, in the 80s, right? I was. Yep. I, yeah, yep. I was 20. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Andrew, for joining us on this uh, episode of Fresh Freedom. And thank you to all of you for watching this show. Um, if you have enjoyed the show and the banner, hit the like and subscribe button for your regular dose of freedom, and please share it. The Fresh Freedom Podcast is your ticket to liberty, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, X, and Rumble. Until next time. Are you going to stay fr say fresh? No. Tell me you're not going to stay <laughs> safe fresh. Until next okay. time, I'm going to hear this. Stay fresh and stay free. We'll catch like you this. the next time on like the this. This is Fresh word. Freedom Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're you. still doing it. <laughs> Stay fresh. <laughs> Just wave your hand. This is my world. Stay fresh. Stay fresh. Stay fresh. Stay fresh.